We've all seen this commercial by now, the business executives closing the deal thanks to this secret power, the power to put fancy graphics into their sales presentation in-house using their own computers. Indeed, whether it's Macs or IBMs, it seems everyone these days is trying to sell you a computer by pitching its graphics capability. So today we continue our special two-part look at business graphics on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, I guess these two binders here tell the story. These are identical presentations in terms of sales information. This one is a lot of boring spreadsheets and charts and numbers and the usual stuff you would see. Same report, spectacular color graphics. Obviously, this does a much better job of getting across the story. We're talking about business graphics in the IBM world today. When you think about graphics, you think about the Macintosh, of course. From a new user's point of view who wants to get into business graphics applications, does it matter whether he's in the Mac world or the MS-DOS environment? Well, Stuart, it doesn't really because, well, first of all, the Mac is a standard graphic environment. Any Mac you buy is going to have high-resolution mm -hmm. graphics. And if you buy the Mac, too, then you have color. IBM PC, you're going to have to configure something yourself or with your dealer, like an EGA or VGA mm -hmm. system to get the kind of resolution you really need. But when you get there with IBM PC, then you have all sorts of uh, software and hardware uh, options that you can add to the thing. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you as far as how much you want to configure, how much do you want to have as a standard system. Gary, today, as I said, we're going to focus on business graphics in the IBM world, and we'll see some of the best graphics package for the MS-DOS environment, including the new product from Ashton Tate called Draw Applause, the new product from Lotus called Freelance Plus, the best rated graphics program for the IBM called Harvard Graphics, and a program called Enter Graphics that lets you do graphs in three dimensions. Now, we're going to begin by taking a look at these particular software <laughs> programs from DRI called GemGraph and the presentation team, as used at a company in Sunnyvale, California, where they use the software for everything from sales presentations to technical illustrations. Hello, Hank. ESL is a branch of the TRW Corporation, specializing in communications and reconnaissance equipment for the military. At their headquarters in Sunnyvale, California, the production of technical and maintenance manuals used to require the cooperation of a group of departments and an outside print shop. Today, one person on one PC can do most of the work, from drawing the illustrations to writing the text and designing the layout. What we're trying to replace is all the steps that we normally would have to take with a particular project. For example, just take one book. If you have art and text, the person who is actually assigned the project has to do all of the jobs. He has to not only come up with a manual, but he has to manage it. This would require him to keep track of illustration department, tech pubs, and any other type of external uh, group with it all in one package. He doesn't have to keep track of everybody and what's going on. He can sit there, he can look at it and say, I like that, I don't like that, I want to change it now. ESL's manuals are designed using the GEM presentation package from Digital Research. Technical illustrations are designed on GemDraw. GemGraph produces the charts and graphs. And the illustrations are combined with text using Gem Desktop Publisher. Assembling all the elements of the manual isn't completely solved. The department's mix of Mac and IBM hardware limits the kinds of files that can be transferred over a network. And printing is done out of house. But ESL is pleased with its progress so far. The computer can't do the drawing for you, but it can sure help. It can make it easier. What it does, what it gives uh, to you, is an end result right then.
Joining us in the studio now is Richard Dim, Senior Product Manager with Ashton Tate, and next to Richard is Randy Andes, Vice President of Marketing with Enertronics Research. Gary? Richard, when the IBM PC first came out, I guess it was a character-based machine, right? A monochrome display adapter was a standard thing. Uh, now, is there a movement toward graphics as far as IBM PC users are concerned? Are they demanding graphics now? Oh, very much so, Gary. Uh, the, uh, the movement towards the graphic interface reflects the success that Macintosh has had in the IBM world, and also IBM's move now to the OS2 presentation manager front end uh, graphic interface. So we see that as the, the really the optimal way to provide power and also ease of use. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashton Tate isn't really known as a graphics company, mm -hmm. I don't believe it, but here's a picture of a, a beach. <laughs> 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 Can you tell us what we have here? Certainly, I'm demonstrating a new product from Ashton Tate uh, released in this January of this year. It's a drawing based product which combines a powerful drawing board with a very strong business graphics mm -hmm. capability. We do that by offering a series of pull down menus across the top of our drawing board combined with a number of graphic primitives that represent drawing tools. Supporting the drawing board, however, uh, is the ability to import data directly, for example, in this case from DBase through diff files, mm -hmm. and I'll retrieve, ref retrieve a file now, and all I do is point and click, and I brought the file in. I go to my window, and the graphic is there. Once I retrieve my data, and it's that fast, I can change chart type simply by moving along and picking a different chart type, in this case a pie chart. Again, point and click, and I have a pie chart. At the same time that I choose my chart types, and let's go back to a bar chart, I have a range of uh, charting options. For example, stacking bars, making them 3D, again, point and click, and I have the chart type again. Now let's take this chart and bring it back into our picture window where I can use some of our drawing capabilities. Notice I'm using a mouse. Uh, the product does support a keyboard as mm -hmm. well as a graphic tablet, very important in the IBM world. Now here I have my piece of background art I'd imported earlier from our library. Now, was uh, that created in the program, or that's, that's a library picture? These were actually all created with the program, uh, and uh, the program contains 125 images like this. This I is see. background art as opposed to so something else. So you have else. a library plus you can create That's your own. correct. Now, what I'd like to do is just size my chart. I brought it in, I'll size it, point at size, point at the chart, and make it smaller. Once I've done that, I can relocate the chart. In this case, I'll move it, edit again, move, point and click here, and I'll move it over to this side. And what I'll do is combine that with some text on the screen. Uh, in fact, first I'll redraw it just to clear the screen up. Mm -hmm. I'm refreshing the screen after I've moved things around and left holes where they used to be. Uh, and as soon as my image appears, and you can see that it's a fairly complicated graphic, but it goes quite quickly. Let's go to text. And in this case, I'm going to pick a slightly smaller text size. Notice my icon represents my text size. And I'll pick a color that shows up nicely yellow. And let's put some text right here. And we'll just type in draw. Applause. Mm -hmm. And it's that quick and easy to add text. And yeah. throughout my drawing board, I have a whole range of other really okay. graphic art quality. Remember I mentioned tools. that there's a Tandy 4000 hidden under the table that's driving this. <laughs> yes, this is a yes. 386, and that's one of the reasons we're getting the graphic speed that we well, see here. Oh, I think I was one comment. I think it's important, in fact, that uh, many of these products, Draw Applause, for example, will actually run on 8088 mm -hmm. or an 8086 mm -hmm. chip. Certainly on a 386, it moves along right. at a nice Now, clip. going back to the PC environment a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, what sort of hard copy devices uh, do you support? Draw Plus supports a full range of black and white hard copy devices, laser printers, dot matrix printers. It also supports flatbed plotters. I think very important to the whole industry, uh, Ashton Tate has begun a graphic service bureau called the Ashton Tate Graphic Service. The communication software is built into the product. What this does is allow me to take a picture like this, point and click, send the image off, and have a slide back on my desk the next day. Mm -hmm. Richard, can I ask you to slide to keep Certainly. it over to Randy, because we want to take a look at inner graphics in just a minute. While he's getting inner graphics up, uh, Richard, one more question. You can obviously import files from DBase. Can you import files from other programs into Draw Applause? Yes, we can import files from Lotus, WK1 files, DBase, and also, probably most importantly now, something called a computer <coughs> graphics metafile, which is the, file, the emerging standard for file transfer amongst graphics mm -hmm. products. We import and export CGM files. Okay, Randy, you have Enter Graphics, which has been around from the beginning just about, and, and what does it do? What's unique about Enter Graphics? Well, Enter Graphics is a program which allows you to do not only the drawing board that, that we've seen here, mm -hmm. but it also has a full charting capability as well. So it can do two-dimensional charts, and it, we have uh, about 30 or 35 different formats that you can do in the charting area. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we can do three-dimensional charts and analytic type of graphics. Could you give us some examples oh, okay. uh, of how Inner Graphics works? Sure. What I'd like to show you is a product uh, which is an add-on to Inner Graphics. 
which accentuates the, the three-dimensional aspect of inner graphics. And uh, this particular chart could have been read from a, a Lotus spreadsheet mm -hmm. using our macro, for instance, uh, brought into the program. And then uh, when you go into this, you have the same basic drawing board feature along the top is your command line. And by the way, you could use a mouse with this also. Mm -hmm. And this is Kaleida chart we're looking at, which right. is an add-on to it's inner an graphics. It's an add-on to inner graphics. And it just further enables you to enhance your three-dimensional type mm -hmm. graphics, to rotate, change the view angles of the graphics, this type of thing. Uh, for instance, if we wanted to change uh, the longitudinal attitude of, of this, you can rotate your chart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then once you're through, you go ahead. We have two modes that you can actually draw this in a draft mode. So you can see it initially, say, yeah, I think that's kind of what I want, uh, this type of thing. And then in a fine mode, of course, which is the mm -hmm. completed uh, three-dimensional chart. And of course, we can do not only your pie charts, but bar charts. Uh, line chart and what we call a ribbon chart and it does mapping as well so we have a map of the United mm -hmm. States in three dimensions and you can even select regional areas as well as uh, by state even. Now would you would you put your product up market a little bit you know, in the sense that is this for the average person or you have to have uh, sophisticated artistic <laughs> abilities to use it? Well Intergraphics is a very powerful and flexible type program uh, but we've tried not to ignore that new person who wants to get into the graphics uh, world. Uh, but we've allowed him through prompts and menus to create nice looking charts, but he can grow with our program. But it is focused on the power user. And a, a power user, much like uh, WordPerfect, is focused in the, in the word processing industry uh, to the power user there. We've tried to focus our mm -hmm. package mm -hmm. to him also. Okay, Randy Richard, thank you very much. Now, if you really want to use your graphics in a serious way, you not only want color, maybe you want three dimensions, maybe you'd also like to animate it and put it on video. Well, one product that does that is called Picture Maker from Cubacomp. Wendy Woods has a report. This is an educational video designed to teach high school students the way banks make money. No, it wasn't made by a high-tech production house in L.A. It was made by the people it's about, the Federal Reserve Bank. Inside the San Francisco District Office, there's $100,000 worth of sophisticated computer graphics design gear. And a team assigned the full-time job of producing all the animation needed for the 12th Federal Reserve District. And why does the Federal Reserve District need animation? Well, as part of the federal government, it's taken on the task of educating America's high school students, in this case, about economics. The MTV generation is very used to this type of communication. And I think that to use the old-fashioned kind of videotapes, uh, a lot of students aren't going to really be very interested in, in the information that's portrayed. Uh, I think that more, the more visual you can get now, the more you're going to get across to them. The graphics lab also produces thousands of slides for the bank's business meetings. But people here say it's only a matter of time before the computer animation is as in demand as slides and graduates from school videos to board of directors meetings. In one year, the computer graphics lab's work here has quadrupled, a trend being echoed throughout the big business community where state-of-the-art graphics command the power, the attention, and the money. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us in the studio now is Tim Davenport, director of the Graphics Product Division for Lotus, and next to Tim is Tess Reynolds, group product manager with Software Publishing. Tim, obviously, uh, Lotus 123 has been a very, very popular program over the last several years. One of his strong points, however, I've heard is not its graphics, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> difficult to use. Uh, does Freelance Plus really correct those things? Well, first of all, I don't think it's the case that 123 is all that difficult to okay. use to create charts. <laughs> it's more that people wanted to do a lot more. So uh -huh. Freelance Plus was introduced as a product that allowed you to enhance the chart you first created in 123 or to begin from scratch in Freelance Plus and create a much a more diverse set of graphics. Okay, well, let's get into the program. Sure, let me show you how we can do that. Um, to begin with, I have a screen here where I have loaded uh, a corporate logo, and this is one you may have created yourself with Freelance using mm -hmm. some of the drawing tools, and I've added a line. What I'd like to do is add a chart to this screen, 
And in doing that, I will show you the chart module where there's a form where you enter the text and the data that would drive um, a variety of bar charts. And the chart you create in the program, you're not uh, export importing this from somewhere That's else. That's right, this is being created by Freelance Plus and here's a variety of the chart types that are available. It's as simple as taking this to our screen now and dropping it in. And now you can begin to move it around. First I will edit the size of it so that we can make it part of a slide or an mm -hmm. overhead that would have more graphics on it. So you're building one slide here and you're going to put a bunch of different elements That's in there That's and correct. this graph is one of those elements. That's right, so mm -hmm. I've now moved the, the chart over. One thing you notice on the screen is there's a status panel on the right that gives you some information. It tells you what item is selected and you're working with. It also tells you that you're on page one. Okay. One thing that's available is a second page which you can use as a scratch pad. And on this page uh, we have a map of the United States. This is one of the symbols that, one of the 500 symbols that comes with Freelance. Mm -hmm. And these can be integrated into your graphic. So you didn't have to create that yourself. That's correct. Yourself. And you'll see that I have the state of California selected here and what I will do is copy that up to the first page and then just drop it right in. The value of that second page is that you can have a variety of store graphics there and begin to use them, um, pull them up onto your main page. And here I'll fill it in so it's a little more dramatic. The next thing I'll do is add an arrow which will tie the, the state of California into the numbers that are shown in the bar mm -hmm. to the right and I can do that by just moving the cursor down, begin to use the mouse, and have it automatically drop in an arrow for me. Mm -hmm. um, I can increase the width of that to make it a little more dramatic and then I can go back and add a rectangle which will pop the Calif state of California off the page a little more for us. To do that, I simply choose to add a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And you notice that I've increased the size of the cursor here so that I can line up this rectangle with the box that goes around the bar, the bar chart on the mm -hmm. right. So I drop down now and I line it up. And these are the s sort of the, the advanced drawing and editing tools that, make, that helps make it very productive to do these sorts of graphics. So I drop a rectangle in here and then fill it in. Tim, you could be using the mouse for all these operations. That's correct. That correct? Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that when I do fill it in, it covers the state of California. I can change that by using a priority com command that puts it the rectangle in the back and puts mm -hmm. the state of California mm -hmm. back on top. And then to finish a, a graph like this, a simple t task of adding some text, which we can then place anywhere on the screen. Again, by using the mouse mm -hmm. or the cursor keys. Okay, Tim, uh, I want to ask you to slide the keyboard yeah, and the mouse uh, over well, the test. I want to ask you about uh, output devices again. Uh, what kind of devices do you support for color output? Right, um, range of pen plotters and um, printers, inkjet technology for getting very rich, uh, vibrant looking colors mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. Tess, you were mentioning before, while you, if you can talk while you get loaded up there, sure. that uh, Harvard Graphics kind of took a different approach to, to handling the, the graphics here. What did you mean by that? Um, well, we approached it from the other end that Freelance did. We actually focused on the charting and text, uh, text generation portion of the, crea the process of creating a presentation, for instance, because that's what we felt most people were doing. So we focused on having strong graphing capabilities and an easy way to do text charts, mm -hmm. and then some simple editing features and, and some access to symbols. And show us what Harvard Graphics looks like then. Okay. What we have here is what we call a default bar chart design. Basically, if all you did was enter your title and your numbers, you would get something that looks mm -hmm. like this. And it's ready to go to a pen plot or an output device. We've assigned the colors and the type fonts for you. But if you're not happy with that, it's fairly easy to go and enhance the chart by going to our F8 options menu. We have four pages of options where you can change the way this chart looks by simply picking different attributes. Mm -hmm. Say you wanted it 3D and overlapped, you maybe wanted the bars to look a little bit wider, um, maybe a little bit narrower and mm -hmm. so on. You can assign different colors to the background, you can assign legends, add data tables and so on, but even just by changing uh -huh. those two values you can see the chart already looks fairly different. I can also go back into my data 
and calculate a whole new series of data by using our calculate options, where if you hit F4, mm -hmm. you, we have 19 keyword formulas built in. Say I wanted to calculate the total of those two data series, all I had to do here was hit a keyword called at sum, and if mm -hmm. I don't remember what that is, I can hit F1 and it will prompt mm -hmm. me on what I need to do. And I automatically have a new data series now, and if I hit F2, I can display uh -huh. what that new graph looks like. So I can calculate things like power regression and uh, sums and differences right. of data series right within the chart, and I can also reorganize them and copy them. Tess, I understand one of the nice features here of Harvard Graphics is uh, instead of turning the graphics into slides, you can actually use the computer as your presentation device by doing kind of yes, a slideshow. Can. Could you show us how you do that? Certainly. Uh, one of the options on the menu is to go and select the slideshow, which we're going to do here. And uh, we can now display this chart using a computer like this or a large screen monitor or an EGA projection device, which many corporations have in their meeting rooms. And you can have a show like this complete with special effects, fades and wipes, moving on from one chart to another. So um, you can go in and, in fact, program the transitions from one screen to the other and decide correct, what you want? Correct. Correct. And you can also assign time, uh, certain timing to each slide the way it displays. You can do build of your effects like this. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, pause and uh, reverse motion using your mouse or using your keyboard. And can you control that slideshow in real time if you were giving a presentation? Yes, you at the can. Same if time? I didn't want to assign a default time, I could just hold my mouse and click along to the next mm -hmm. slide whenever I'm ready, at, just as if I were using a 35 millimeter projector. And can you import data from other software into Harvard Graphics? Then? Yes, definitely. We support all the leading import and export standards, and so we can read one, two, three WKS files, either the name graph that's been stored in Lotus or worksheets, and of course all other worksheets that save in that format. We also import ASCII and the limited mm -hmm. ASCII, so we, we can import. And we've also we've talked about hard copy devices on every one of yes. these programs, and you have some hard You've copy. You've got some. Is that yes. output from? Uh, these graphics. are just some examples of the high quality output that you can get using some of our symbols to merge with the slides to make them look a little bit more interesting. What, what kind of uh, printer would you have used for this? Here? These were done on a Calcomp Color Master uh -huh. thermal printer and that's why you get that nice shiny yeah, finish yeah. to the color. Okay, that's great. Tess, Tim, thank you very much. Okay. That's our look at business graphics. Hope we'll see you here again next week on the Computer Chronicles. file this week. It's IBM rumor time again. This time the talk is about a new low-end personal system 2 computer without microchannel architecture. The stories on the street are split between those who believe the new old machine will have an AT bus and those who believe it will have an XT bus. In any event, it will apparently be called the PS2 Model 35, have 10 megahertz 286 processor, VGA display, and three and a half inch drives. PC pundits are calling it the classic Coke syndrome, with consumer demand for the older formula still strong. Meanwhile, back at the office, more bad press about the PS2 Model 30. The IRS says one recent delivery of Model 30s had a failure rate of 50 percent, with most problems showing up in the monitors and in the hard disk circuitry. Zenith says it's going into production with a new multi-processor computer that can support up to 16 386 chips and 160 terminals running off a single PC. The FCC says that 75 percent of PCs recently tested failed to meet radio interference standards, despite the fact that the models had earlier gotten FCC approval. The commission says manufacturers submit so-called lab queens to the FCC, which are okay, but they then proceed to crank out production models which don't meet the standards. Inside Peripherals says it has developed a three and a half inch floppy disk that can hold 20 megabytes of data. Several major disk manufacturers have reportedly licensed the technology. The first disks are due out in early 1989. Time now for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. These linked Rolodex cards serve as a visual metaphor for HyperCard the hot new Macintosh method for linking bits of data together. It's been in the news a lot since it was introduced last year, and now commercial HyperCard applications are coming to market. Among the early winners is Focal Point. Focal Point is a personal organizer of multiple dimensions. It installs itself on the home card menu. 
The first thing you see is the daily calendar. You can enter appointments and annotate them. The second thing you see is a to-do list. You complete items and mark them off each day. You can refer to prior to-do lists and you can move items from one day to the next. You can also refer to old to-do lists. There's a monthly calendar, which you can print out. There's a name and address folder, which can be linked with to-do items or calendar items. You can also log outgoing and incoming calls, and there's a call timer. There are five other project and client management functions we don't have time to mention. Focal point for the Macintosh is $100 from Activision in Mountain View, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. A trial date has been set in the Apple Microsoft HP lawsuit, but the judge has set the date for August of next year, 11 months from now. Microsoft has asked the judge for the reason behind the long delay. Both MS and HP are concerned that the longer the case drags on, the more uncertainty there will be regarding the future of the Windows and New Wave operating environments. Well, you can't sue a virus, but you can sue the hacker who planted one. In what is believed to be the first such lawsuit, a bulletin board operator in New Mexico is suing an alleged virus uploader for, quote, knowingly and intentionally unloading a digitally infected file. A copy of the lawsuit is in the IBM Communications Forum on CompuServe. Most high schools are happy if they have a few Apple IIs hanging around, but Thomas Jefferson High School in Virginia can now brag about being the only high school in the country to have its own supercomputer. If you recall, earlier this year, we reported on a contest run by ETA Systems of St. Paul, Minnesota, for high school students to come up with school projects that would make use of a supercomputer. Well, Jefferson High won the contest, and so an ETA 10T supercomputer is now on its way. Finally, if you've become addicted to fax machines, there's help on the way. Northwest Airlines has announced that it is installing credit card-operated fax machines at its executive lounges in 12 major airports. So secretaries, watch out. The boss is never really away anymore. That's it for this week's Random Access File. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $3 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.